Um, we, we're still on and let's now get to find out why, how other things have been. Well, the Director of Salt and Light Ministries, Dr. Joyce Ayi, has described 2015 as a challenging year for her and many individuals. She, however, says most people like her will attest to God's sustenance during the year. In her chat with Mama V, the stateswoman also touched on our leadership, energy, economy, corruption, strikes and labour issues, among others. Thank you very much. Mama V, I can't believe we're together again. Yeah, <laughs> this time in your office. Yes, yeah. isn't that awesome? Yeah. yeah, I love to be in your space. So. Oh, this is good. This is the first time you're telling me. <laughs> But we want to look at 2015. Yeah. Has it been challenging, difficult? I think it has in many ways. 2015 has been difficult. I mean, if I take it personally, um, it has been tough. You know, running the ministry uh, on support and then finding support sources drying up is, is a, it has been a, a major challenge because you know businesses are going through difficulties so businesses that used to support readily support our activities you know have had difficulties mm. uh, and so we've had to really struggle even though i'll say god in his goodness has enabled us to do what we need to do if i take my home life i think we spent pretty close to 40,000 Ghana CDs, even before the year is out, on um, generator fuel. Not to mention the inconveniences of having things go, food going bad, mm -hmm. or equipment breaking down. I mean, I've had to repair two air conditioners, you know, because of the constant so my staff have also had to live with difficulty because I mean working in this ministry uh, is not like working in a corporate space uh, and so paying salaries is, is difficult anyway I mean I try to be very reasonable um, but you can't increase the pay when, for example, uh, utilities go up, mm. you know, the, the latest one is 59 for um, electricity. electricity and 60 something for water. Mm -hmm. It would be ideal to give your staff a little mm -hmm. money to make up for that, but you can't. I think the political space has also been, uh, how, how should I put it? That the temperature, <laughs> the temperature has sort of shot up a little bit, which is um, understandable. Um, but hasn't it been interesting because it's been within the parties? Yes, of course. Mo you know, often, yes, of course. Not In fact, it has shown, you know, even though the temperature has gone up, I think it is showing democratic maturity because. Uh, people don't understand that uh, you can live with differences. Mm. You know, you should learn to live with differences. And um, so to find that in, in both big parties, both the NDC and the MPP, you know, they've learned to live with some of these differences. It's interesting. Some people think that it will spill over into... 2016 election period. I'm praying it won't. I'm praying that all the steam <laughs> will mm. be totally lost by the time we get there. But I think for many lives, uh, the importance of God and his miraculous ways of keeping mm. us has been so evident. Because most of us know that if it had not been for God, we would not have been able to manage. One thing I love about God is the wisdom he gives to handle challenges. And for me, that has been actu actually really tremendous. Mm. Yes. 
Let's go back to the parties, or perhaps let's start from the very top on my list. Uh, I know that you're passionate about leadership issues. Yes. And I remember, I think from the beginning of the year till maybe the middle of the year, yes. we talked a lot about leadership, yes. even in the country. Uh, we're getting very close to the end of 2015. Do we still have issues? Oh, I don't think leadership issues will go away just at the snap of the fingers. You know, I, I know running a country is very complex, you know, but uh, somehow you, you, want, you want the kind of leadership that is able to boldly hold things together and chart a path that gives clarity and certainty. And sometimes you don't get that impression that it is happening, whether it is at the executive or at the legislature or at the judiciary. Right now, well, when was it? I think it was on Monday mm -hmm. that I read in the papers that the judiciary has boldly uh, dismissed about 22, is it magistrates? I think magistrates. Yes. Yes, magistrates, you know, which is a bold step, you know, because people need to know that life has to be structured to make it worth living and that sanctions must apply for wrongdoing you know you need it all the time sometimes i worry for example our president somebody does something wrong and you remove him from one ministry and you just send him to the presidency it bothers me because really it, unless you just wanted to replace the person with another person you know then why would you continue to increase the numbers of people in your presidency when they come what will they be talking about because your ministers are supposed to advise you as far as running government is concerned so if there's somebody in the presidency doing the same thing a minister is doing i, I don't understand i don't understand and and i i, I find that a little worrisome mm. I find that a little worrisome, you know. Do, do we have clear leadership at the power front? When I say power, I mean energy. <laughs> well, you have a minister who says he knows what he's doing. Maybe he talks out of 10 from time to time in the sense that, I mean, there are certain things that can never be in your control. You can't control them, you know. And... He doesn't only talk out of 10. I think sometimes maybe he is a little economic with the truth. Mm. I'll say a little economic. I don't think he sets out to lie. I wouldn't say that. I know him well enough to say that maybe he doesn't set out to lie. But maybe to sort of, I don't know, whether to mellow the truth or whatever. Because... But you and I know that right now, even the coming of the badges don't solve all the problems. You see, if Akusumbu were in full flight and the installed capacities that we have in Takradi and Abuazi were in full flight, then the badge brings additional, it adds up, you know. But you still have a shortage mm -hmm. because Akosumbo, I think they've closed another turbine, mm -hmm. you know, so maybe now they're running on two turbines instead of six, you know. So it would be good to face us and tell us that, you know, we still will have shortages, but not as bad as before mm. because these interim measures will help us to, to meet some of our needs. Meanwhile, maybe we are making sure that the installed capacities that we have, you know, are brought to a workable condition. If they need to be retrofitted or something like that, you can do it. I still haven't also heard anything about the gap in terms of how much is owed to ECG, to Gridco, to VRA. 
I still have not heard about the Minister of Finance paying the backlog that government owes. I still haven't heard it. Maybe he has, but I still haven't heard it. Because that's a big gap. I still maintain that even with the leakages in the way ECG loses power, domestic users and the few uh, corporate and manufacturing users, you know, do well to pay their bills. Mm -hmm. But there's also a large chunk of government, you know, agencies, agencies and so I mean, think of the universities. The universities are given essential power and the universities decided that, look, well, they were told to pay the rest. Mm -hmm. So they decided to let the students pay. That the students will pay for what they consume in the halls of residence and so on, but that they wouldn't have to pay anything for uh, the lecture rooms and so on. And naturally, students, they will agitate. Mm -hmm. So they agitate and government says, okay, 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 we're not doing it anymore. But that money still has to be paid. It has to be found to be paid. You know? And so sometimes I, I don't understand these things. You know, because I know that if I'm going to the market because I lack onions and I lack tomatoes and peppers and gari and I have only 10 CDs, you know, I will make sure that I buy what is absolutely needful and then explain to the household that, you know, we used to eat a lot of tomatoes. We can't do that anymore or something like that, you know. So... Sometimes, you know, but as I said, running the nation is complex. I guess... But the, these don't particularly sound complex. I mean, well, they'll Being tell you honest that, with the people. Exactly. Being honest with the people should not be complex. And I think that one of the things, you know, as a, as a communicator, as a public relations person, one thing I think ought never to be compromised is honesty and truth. Now, if your organization has some negative issues, you confront those issues. And you even say that, yes, we know we have this and that. We're doing everything we can to resolve it, you know, because otherwise you end up firefighting. Mm -hmm. And firefighting is never enough because as soon as you put one off, another one starts. Yeah. And you never, when you're firefighting, you never get the chance to really run your business or run your home or run your relationship the way you should. Mm. Because you're, you're, you're just, you know, using ad hoc methods to put out problems. Yeah. Yes. Would you say all these things have also compounded the issue of the economy? Uh, our CD didn't particularly do well, start well this year. Uh, and it hasn't, it hasn't ended done well. well. Hasn't ended well. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, you know. I mean, I, I think that there's certain things that are core to the fundamental economic issues. Agriculture, for example, didn't do well at all, you know. And one honest situation we should face in this country also is that we are an importing country. Mm. We can't run away from it. All our manufacturers, practically all our manufacturers, but all our manufacturers require imported goods, if not in equipment, then in raw materials mm -hmm. or both. So to say that you cannot dollarize me, I don't understand. Because you don't use CDs to import goods. Mm -hmm. You have to convert the CDs to a convertible currency, which is the dollar. You know, so people are always going to need dollars. You want people to uh, turn fruit into juice, they need equipment. We don't manufacture the equipment here. Even if we did, we would need the raw materials that we, we will use mm. to manufacture the equipment. Most of the containers we don't, you manufacture know, manufacture 
from our own resources mm. and so on. So, you know, you want to make a car, <laughs> you'll have to bring the cars to do it. Whatever you're trying to do, you know, you want to make fabric, the dyes, the yarns, mm. you know, the base materials, everything you have to. Um, even if you were turning the little cotton that you grow into yarns, you still need equipment. You need fertilizers for the cotton. You know, you need a ginning machine, you know. So we are really import-based as a country. And I think the way we can overcome the challenge or we can level it out is to produce enough for export. You know, there's nothing mm. wrong. So we can balance. Exactly. There's nothing wrong if I have to go somewhere else. I mean, I need a dressmaker. So I have to make enough money to give to the dressmaker to make my dress for me. Mm -hmm. If I can't make it myself, you know. So really, it's the balance. It's the balance that we should think about. Mm. And we seem not to be doing well with the balance. So there's always a big gap in our balance of payment. You know, so it means like we, we are importing far more than we have money to pay for. Mm. So there's always a gap. Let's shift our attention to labor. A lot of agitations uh, in 2015 oh, as well. Little, little, 2015 has seen a lot. Oh, so 2015 is better. No, no. Okay. It's not better. <laughs> it's not better. What I'm saying is that it's seen a lot. Mm. It's seen a lot. It's seen a lot. You know, and again, I think it has been part of this gap of government not having enough revenue, you know, sometimes to pay direct salaries, sometimes to pay allowances and so on. For me, what is distressing is that the louder and fiercer the agitation, mm. the more likely they are to get their money. Yeah. It shouldn't be like that. Because then it will not stop people from agitating. Mm. Because if I make the loudest noise and I get what I want, it's like a child, you know, scream in the middle of the night, get your mother up uh, to, to make you, uh, you know, your, your milo. When, if the milo had been made and put aside, you don't have to scream. The moment mm -hmm. it's time, it will be given you, yeah. you know. So it, it has not been good, of course. All man hours lost are also a cost to the economy because you know um, productivity ends you know ends as money so when people work we, we get uh, either money or services or something mm. so when people are not working there's a problem yeah it means our productivity is going down mm. and that has not been very good you know we saw doctors go on a very long strike very long for the strike. first time i think in yes. my life yes uh, and we still don't know where they are even though they are quiet i think i read somewhere that the conditions of service have either been signed or, or are almost signed or something like that that was their biggest agitation i mm. think yes, yes. So if it's been done, then praise God for that. Mm. Yeah. But you know, there are different groups who are watching. We, yes. Even within the medical uh, services, there are a lot of paramedics who also have issues. Pharmacists. You know, you know, pharmacists, nurses, laboratory technicians, and so on. You know. So the doctors go, then the nurses go, then the laboratory technicians go, then the pharmacists go, and so on. We need to resolve that. I think we should have a package for the medical services. Mm. Have the various strata, you know, and make sure that we deal with it, you know. Talking about which, you know, you also have a, an NHIS crisis from time to time. Sure. You know, I, I really think that we should build up on the national health insurance you know i mean this whole thing about people making just one payment for life i, I don't think makes sense you know but collecting what people should pay per year is very important and we must find ways of topping up we must find ways of topping up you know i mean we can we can even use the uh, single spine structure mm -hmm to maybe cascade the amounts that we pay, you know, 
cascade up. So depending on how much you earn, mm. you don't pay the base. I think that could bring quite a bit of money. Would it be fair to those of us who don't use the system? Well, we have, you know, the, the fairness is in provision for the majority. I mean, it's like paying insurance. Your car never has an accident. But it's for that mm. rainy day. That's what an insurance is for. So you, you could pay insurance and never really benefit directly from it because you are okay, mm. you know. But I think in addition to even what I'm suggesting, we should encourage uh, private insurance companies or insurance companies to do top-ups. So we have a base, and then insurance companies also top up. So right. in, let's say if you take multimedia, uh, the whole workforce you know, could go on an, uh, a top up insurance package so that the services you receive would be higher than if you were on the base. Mm. You know? And that would also bring in more money. And I think that doctors would also get more money. I am on a top up um, insurance. insurance. So I go, to, I go with my card to the hospital I use and they know that it's a credible uh, insurance company. They have this uh, medical health insurance and uh, it, it, it solves a lot of problems. Mm. Yeah. Sure. Let's talk about corruption. Hmm. Apart from the judges, uh, corruption index puts Ghana second in Africa. It is. A lot of people terrible. think that we're corrupt. It is, it is terrible. You know, what, 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 what is painful is that we haven't quite understood the full import of corruption. I like to describe corruption as anything that is getting rotten. You know, so anything which is corruptible, it means that it's susceptible to rot. Hmm. Yeah. And it seems to have become a way of life. And that is very painful. At every turn, you're driving on the road. Mm -hmm. You cross a red light. You want to put money in the policeman's pocket. Yeah. Instead of doing what is right. You know. And of course, we haven't got the system. We, we did hear about some spot fines. But I don't know what happened. It hasn't been implemented. Yes, which is a shame. You know, your child passes to go to school. The person has chosen a certain school as part of the four schools that the child chose. The child is placed in one of the schools. But you don't like it. So you want to go and see somebody. Mm -hmm. Monies don't always have to, you know, in corruption, monies don't always change hands. Sometimes it's influence peddling, which is part of the corruption. So you want to peddle influence. You want to go and influence somebody to do something in your favor, even though it is wrong. And that has permeated our society. Of course, the bribery bit is when the money change hands. Mm. But it is a mindset. We want to cut corners at every turn. Mm. We don't realize that we ourselves are also part of it. Of course, when it is at the top level where it affects a lot of people, then it's an issue. I mean, even as we sit, didn't the warrior man say he was going to pay the money he should not have received in December? I guess he'll tell us that December is not yet through. But for me, what effrontery to say that, yes, I know I owe, and you determine when you will pay it. You know, I mean, and nobody says anything. I mean, that's part of the corruption. Maybe we, have, we haven't chopped some of the money. But whatever it is, why can't the law work? Hmm. Why can't the law work? But as a choice, you, you realize that when you are not part of it, you will be left there and you would have nothing. 
Really? I'm I think so that's sure what people are thinking. I'm not so sure you'll have nothing. Because if you don't give the, that policeman that two CDs You'll have to go CDs. through the inconvenience of saying he'll take you to court. But most of the time, they don't. Most of the time, they don't. Because, you know, the thing is that, okay, book me. Okay, I've booked you. Fine. Okay. You know, because what we too should say is that, okay, book me. It is inconvenient, yes. But it has to come at, to a time when I myself should know that I can't jump the red light and get away with it. Mm -hmm. I myself should know that I don't want to deal with the inconvenience of going to court and being told, come again and come again and come again and come again. And therefore, I won't jump the red light. You know, good habits ought to be built. And it is painful to build good habits, I know. You know, because we like to get away with. Sometimes you can stay in traffic because you want to do the right thing. I know, thing, all And you'll be the there for like forever. I know, I know, I know, I know. It is really, really terrible. Because others are breaking the law. Mm. Sometimes, you know, the, the law enforcement people are right in front of you and they're doing nothing about it, you know. But, you know, it gives you, you get angry, but you get this good feeling that you didn't break the law. That's true. You get this good feeling. You know, because uh, truth-telling, uh, you know, anti-corruption and so on have to be embedded in our very psyche. When something is embedded in your psyche, it is you, you know, and you will wait your turn, you know, or you'll ask to be given opportunity. One thing that I do sometimes, you know, when there's a long queue for food, <laughs> not that I'm going to eat much, I say, oh, I belong to the Queue Jumpers Anonymous. It's an association. <laughs> you know, so you do it jovially. Yeah. People are willing to, to help you out. Of course, if everybody jumped the queue, it wouldn't be nice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I think we should find ways in which we can, mm. uh, you know, it, when, I, when, you know, uh, I'm in the car, you know, I'll tell my driver, ask. You want to get into the, ask. It is polite. It is right. It is courteous. Because that person has the right of way. Mm -hmm. You want to enter. Why don't you politely ask the person to give you way? What is wrong with it? And after he's given you away, thank him or thank her. You know, they're, they're, we have to live by values, really. In fact, I, I want to ask you to join me on this crusade of, you know, a righteousness revolution. Mm, I have to Do work you? on myself. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but to decide to do what is right. Mm. To decide, you know, from the depths of our hearts. For the self-satisfaction. Self-satisfaction family satisfaction, community satisfaction, nation satisfaction, because we'll build our nation on good values yeah, and not something less. So, you know, all the negatives from 2015, do you oh, see uh, us carrying them forward to I 2016? I pray not. I pray not. First and foremost, I think that we need to begin to see light. What is it that I even as an individual, can do to make things better. Electricity Corporation tells us that, you know, we can conserve energy by putting off the lights when we're not there, you know, putting off gadgets that are not in use and even taking them off the plug that we save electricity. I think it will show in our billing, but it will also show in consumption. Hmm. So that is a habit if we take but a positive Joyce, habit. Personally, sometimes when they say that, I find it a bit annoying <laughs> because I don't get the energy. I don't get the power. <laughs> I see what you mean, yes. So when I get it for 12 hours, are you asking me to conserve what really? No. What they're saying is not the 12 hours you get. But for example, if within the 12 hours hmm. you have to go out, don't leave your lights on because you're not there. Do you get me? Sure. Yes. When you do get it, you know, I know it's very annoying. And in fact, what is even more annoying <laughs> is thinking that doing so is easing and therefore we are being done a favor. 
nobody is doing any of us a favor because as a nation, it is our right to get electricity. It is our right to get electricity. And when it's not being provided, it is against our rights. When we get the fullness of it, we have only received our rights. Nobody is doing us a favor. And that has to be drummed into the heads of the providers. That to say that, oh, but things are better. In fact, another annoying thing was that, well, you should even be happy that we are charging 59% because they asked for 400%. I mean, why should we have paid 400%? Right now, the, the cost of crude has gone down. Mm -hmm. So what are we paying for? You know. So sometimes we have to say some of these things. Yeah. It's true. I agree with you. Get annoyed. <laughs> and then, but don't just be annoyed, but state it. Like I did the other day when 72 hours, I believe me. You shouldn't live in a blank bay. The lights are off most of the time. That's a Joyce, what should we be reflecting on as a people as the year draws to a close? As the year draws to a close. We should seriously be reflecting on certain values that should define our leadership at the executive, at the, the legislature, at the judiciary. And these values, I would say truth, integrity, honesty, uh, courtesy, respect. Because frankly, you disrespect a people when you lie to them about things. It's, it's disrespect. And I think that those of our people who want to be in politics should understand that illiteracy does not mean stupidity. When people are not literate, it does not mean they cannot think. Poverty also does not mean stupidity. The fact that people are poor does not mean that you can just keep them down by almost deliberately denying them what is their due as citizens of the land. Because to be in politics is to want to be a model citizen who wants to serve the people. A model citizen who wants to serve. And if you want to serve people, you try to bring the best out of them. That for me, as we enter 2016, is something that we should deeply reflect on. You know, people will say, oh, well, if you use those methods, you will not be voted for. But I, I don't think that should be the way we should go. We should help our people to vote for the right things. And if I know I will not give my people the right things, then I should even thank God when they don't vote for me. Because it means that I will be a shame to myself. We should also demand from our leaders at all levels chieftaincy, church, corporate level, everything. A little more engagement with us. You know, even in a workplace, it is, it is a, a, a mutual relationship. It's a quid pro quo. I give you my labor and you give me money you know, for the labor I give you. Mm. So we need each other. And so me as the worker, I'm as important to you as the employer, as you the employer are important to me as the employee. We need to build such relationships. Mm. And I think when we build such relationships, this issue of, you know, serving one another so that the nation would go well would help us, you know. But right now, Employees see themselves as the downtrodden, and that employ employers are exploiting them. A 
employers also feel, uh, you know, shortchanged because they think employees are not putting in their best. So we, we need to work on our relationships um, at the political level, at the corporate level. Church, we also need to work on relationships. You know, because um, as far as I'm concerned, church, from the Christian perspective, is uh, 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 an assembly of people who have been called out of the darkness of the world and brought into the marvelous light of God. Oh, surely our character should be different. And our pastors should explain these things to us, that we are different people. I tell people that if you are a Christian, you are abnormal. You should not consider yourself normal. You are not. Because you have been moved away from the norm of the world and you have come into the kingdom of God with totally different perspectives. We need to do this. Because frankly, if we lived our faith, things would be different in this country. You can't, you know, as James says, uh, the mouth cannot drink salt water and pure water at the same time. But this is what we seem to be doing. You know, we go to church, we sing lots of hallelujahs, we thump our Bibles, and we pray in tongues, only to come to the market with the real place where we need to demonstrate that we are different. And we don't do it. Sometimes we, we do it at the car park, right? Yes. After the church. Right after the church. <laughs> you know, so really, so all these relational things I'm talking about will make our country a better country. And it, it is not just, you know, some people are looking for very tangible things and so on. A lot of tangible things start from the intangibles. Like a mindset, it's an intangible. And yet it is so critical to behavior. Because behavior, you would say, is the tangible. But you need a, a, a certain mindset to be able to behave in a certain mm. way. I would like us to begin to respect the ordinary people in this country and be honest with them at all levels. Be honest with them because they deserve it. You know? When you hold political office, you do so at the sufferance of those who voted for you. It is their mandate you are carrying. Mm -hmm. So you, you really are not there for yourself. And I think that is something people should remember. And we the people too. The way we lick boots and we koto and we lie flat and you know, we make them our masters. You know, masters who, who don't even value us the way we will run around and so on. It's not good. We, we need to respect our leaders. But we also need to know that they are serving us. They are serving us. And that is why, even if we think they are chiefs who should be carried in palanquins, we should remember that chiefs swear oaths before the people that you call me in the rain, I'll be there. You call me in the sun, I'll be there. Any problem of yours is my problem and so on. That is why they swear an oath before the community. So even they, carried in palanquins and, and all, know that it is service. Mm. And the townspeople respect a chief who serves them by making sure things work out well for them. Mm. So even if we want our president to be the uh, a chief of Ghana, we should still know that according to our culture, a chief swears an oath to serve and not to lord it over. Mm. You know, and that our respect for the chief does not mean that we can lie down for the chief to step over us and, 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 and you know, starve us and so on. After a while, you would want to, you, you would want to, uh, how do you say it? Uh, it's too. The chief. Sure. A chief that doesn't do well, you want to disto. Mm. So all of us in political office and in their political space should go into 2016 making us the people they represent, you know, 
they should see themselves as stewards, mm. our stewards. Sure. They are taking care of us, and mm. it's, it's very important. Mm. And I think as ordinary citizens, we should also know that uh, this entitlement syndrome should go. You know, uh, we think we shouldn't do anything. I mean, uh, sometimes I feel that uh, if Ghanaians were the people who were in the desert and the manna came, they would tell God to put the manna, collect it and put it in their mouths, chew it for them, swallow it for them, and if possible, expel it for them. <laughs> you know, no effort. It doesn't happen. Yeah. It takes a lot of effort. It's us in the cosmopolitan areas, I think, who are the worst offenders. Because mm. our people in our villages, they work so hard for next to nothing. Mm. So those of us who are educated, those of us who are living in the cosmopolitan areas, I think uh, we, we need to put in a little more to, to really raise the quality of life. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Um, it will be thank you time, but I think your freshest uh, award uh, is the lifetime achievements yes. from the Ghana Chamber of Mines mm -hmm. as a former CEO yourself. Yes. Uh, share with us that kind of feeling. I, it took me by surprise. <laughs> I, I was overwhelmed. I was overwhelmed. I was overwhelmed and extremely thankful and grateful. You know, I went in there wanting to make a difference. And it gives me a lot of fulfillment to know that I did make a difference. I am still convinced that there are two major economic activities that can change the face of Ghana. Major. Of course, these activities will require all the services and everything they're good, but agriculture and mining, these two well structured, well managed, strategically positioned will change Ghana. And and, and that is what uh, you know became the major orientation when I was working there and getting the people who were in the industry themselves, those of us who were working at the chamber to understand it and engaging everybody who had an ear to listen. And I, I feel so blessed, so blessed. I, I, it took me by surprise. Mm. Another one that took me by surprise was the public relations, uh, uh, what do they call it? The personality. personality of the year. I, you know, I'm saying I'm not even in corporate life. How do I become the public relations personality of the year? You know, but um, but you know you deserve it. I thank God that you know that I get noticed because really I don't work to get noticed. Mm. I think that um, anything that needs doing should be done with excellence, and the beauty is that in each of us resides excellence. Mm. Each of us and be excellent at whatever we do. All we need to do is to just let it come out, you know. So I'm, I'm very grateful, mm. very grateful. We're grateful that yeah. you could spend time with us. Thank you very much, Mama yeah. V. Oh, are you coming again? It would be lovely. Uh, it's been I'll wonderful talking to you. I'll come again, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Yes. I want to have you like every day. Well, let's make it like three times a week. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you.